Well, it basically started here in Los Angeles in 1938 when uh, my father, Max, and his brother, Kurt, uh, arrived in Los Angeles uh, and acquired a couple of neighborhood theaters. Uh, Kurt had been living in the Chicago area for a few years and running a neighborhood theater there, and my dad had been working in Paris, uh, and uh, which is where I was born, and uh, he came to this country f uh, for the, f you know, to live for the first time in '38. So we we count that as the real start of Lemley Theaters. Well, uh, the mission is basically to show good quality films, uh, American independent, foreign, whatever. Uh, and that's basically been, been it for uh, the last 30 years or more, the, the same goal. Probably one of the things is our longevity, uh, that we are totally committed to the policy that we are doing. It's not, uh, it's where our personal interest was from the beginning uh, and where it continues to be. That I, I really don't know the, uh, I'm not a prognosticator of the future. Uh, I obviously have uh, beliefs that the film uh, business as we know it will continue, otherwise I wouldn't be building new theaters. Uh, and we have plans for uh, continued expansion. So I, I believe in some way or another this business will continue, that people want to see films in a movie theater, not on a digital computer or a cell phone or whatever else. In a way, I, I stepped into a, company, a business that had an existing pattern. It's, uh, you know, this, back in 38, they devised box office reports and accounting methods. Uh, and even though at one time they had five theaters, uh, and in the early 50s uh, or late 40s, it had gone down to one single theater. Uh, the methodology is not that much different now than it was back then. Uh, we have gone to computers and uh, uh, the technology uh, has changed a bit, but uh, the basics of uh, how a business is structured uh, was already in place as I got into it. Uh, even though there was only the one theater, as we started expanding, we'd hire, when we needed to, hire a person in the office, and we would turn over a, a portion of our work to that person. And then all of a sudden, you expand again to a couple more theaters, and you say, oh, we could use another person. And then you delegate again a portion of the work that we are, that we, being my father and myself at that time, we're doing 100% ourselves to other employees. And so gradually you end up uh, developing a network of employees that uh, take care of uh, the paperwork, keep things flowing, uh, the ordering of materials, the supervision of, uh, of uh, managers, uh, uh, payroll, all these type of things that uh, in the beginning we did 100% ourselves. Well, I guess the advantage is that uh, you are the ones making all the decisions. You don't need to go to anybody else uh, to make those determinations of whether you expand in this location or uh, reject that uh, uh, location, 
you are the ones that, that do it. Uh, the disadvantage could be that uh, from the beginning, uh, we were very cash poor. So that expansion was very, very difficult. Uh, but that might have been an advantage as well. We didn't overexpand. Uh, we just moved at, at a pace that we could afford to absorb and that we could afford to finance. No, not the, that was at the beginning. Uh, as you become more successful and you are able to uh, save a little bit from, uh, I mean, at the beginning, most of the money goes to just raising a family. Uh, but eventually, uh, you do start to save. And uh, what has always happened is that the money that the company makes has, for the most part, gone right back into expansion. So uh, basically, I'm not sitting there with a lot of uh, invested money. Uh, I guess I've been fortunate in that my home has appreciated, and so I've probably made more money from the appreciation on my home than I have from anything running the business. So uh, the money that was available was uh, being used to uh, build new theaters. Uh, we were not in a position to even buy the land for the theaters, so we had to l make leases. And then we had to spend the money to actually do the construction uh, and equipping of the theater. Uh, in some cases, that can be a good thing. In other cases, it, uh, it can be a problem. Uh, we created uh, two theaters in Westwood Village, the Regent and the Plaza Theater. Uh, they were very successful theaters for 15 years, I believe that was the term of our lease. Uh, when the lease expired, even though we had built the theaters, uh, we were replaced as tenants. Uh, probably the primary reason we were replaced was that the gentleman that we had dealt with originally had died and his daughter was running the enterprise. and. Uh, she had personal f relationships and friends with uh, someone at Mann Theatres and brought them in. Uh, those theatres subsequently have gone downhill from the day we were replaced. Uh, but that is what can end up happening uh, when you build on uh, in a leased uh, situation. Lately, we have been in a position where we are uh, able to acquire the land and do the building. Uh, and for the long term, uh, I think it's very healthy for us as a, as a company to be in that position. But it took 40 years before we got to that position. There's nine buildings with 44 screens. We actually did, uh, years ago, we bought the Fine Arts Theater, uh, and then we also bought the Colorado Theater in Pasadena. Subsequently, both of those properties were sold in order to uh, go into a couple of other projects. Uh, we felt that uh, <coughs> those, those particular theaters had sort of reached an end uh, of their usefulness and we could use the cash uh, to build new theaters. Oh, probably just continuity. Uh, I mean, that's the biggest challenge. Uh, there have been various threats to uh, our continued existence and we've met those and uh, have been able to continue and prosper. Basically it all comes easy. I, I have a master's degree from UCLA uh, in finance. My bachelor's degree was in business administration. 
I can't say that there is a single part that is uh, the most challenging. Uh, once you establish uh, your abilities, uh, you're able to get product. Uh, product is what rules the, uh, the business. Uh, people don't come to the theater because you have a very lovely looking theater. They come very specifically because there's a film they want to see. I could say that. Uh, uh, started very early in my life in, in business. Uh, my dad, even when he had one theater, he worked basically 18-hour days. Uh, when I started in the business, I already had three children. Uh, my wife, at the time, laid down the law that she wanted me home at 6 o'clock. So I structured my work day in that manner. Now. Sometimes we would still go out and see a movie or, you know, a screening or something like that, uh, an inspection visit to one of the theaters. We m might do that in the evening, but the mandate was that I be home to help with family chores uh, at 6 o'clock. And we had dinner together every night, uh, all, the, all the family. So uh, those type of considerations, uh, are what dictate how you run your office. I do not expect anybody in the office to work after 6 o'clock, with one exception. The general manager has to supervise what's going on at all the other theaters. Uh, at one time, that was something that I might have done, and so I would go out at night. So he is the only person that has uh, responsibilities that go into the nighttime. Uh, our office closes at 5.30, uh, and for the most part, everybody's gone. Uh, I don't expect people to work more than an eight-hour day. Uh, I don't expect uh, the theater people to work more than an eight-hour day. There are times where uh, you have to have meetings and things like that. We, I, I recall uh, we were in construction on a, on a particular theater and we were having certain problems. In fact, there were a couple different theaters that uh, this would occur. Uh, and during a limited time frame, you'd have to work uh, extra hours to get things done. Uh, but those are the exception. It's not the norm, and you try to live by the norm, not by the exception. Absolutely. I do not have a cell phone. There is nothing that anybody needs to reach me for on a moment's notice. Maybe that's now because I'm insulated by two or three levels below me uh, and they have to deal with the emergency things that might come up at, uh, at any given moment before anybody would call me. But for the most part, they don't have to handle too many emergencies. We try to have the theater manager have responsibility for dealing with uh, issues that come up. Well, you, sometimes you have to close down and give refunds. Uh, when it really breaks, there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, nobody on staff is a, a trained mechanic as such. Uh, supposedly the union projectionist can fix some things, but uh, then you have a service contract with another company that has trained technicians, but they're not there at a moment's notice. So if something happens on screen, hopefully you can get closed down and open before the next show, but sometimes you lose a, an evening. Uh, 
Uh, I mean, you, you, over the years, you continuously have house records and things like that. Uh, that's just the normal running of the business uh, uh, when things are going good. You learn, you know, the staff at the theater learns to deal with it. Uh, <laughs> funny you should ask that. That came up uh, over the weekend uh, in a discussion with someone. I don't really accept stress. Uh, I deal with things as they come up and for the most part I have not let it bother me or stay with me uh, in any way and my wife uh, uh, to this other person we were having a conversation with she acknowledged it and she says yeah that's really true so stress is a is a is a thing that you can actually, I believe, have some degree of control over. Uh, maybe I was helped by the fact that uh, when I first started, uh, my wife, uh, who is no, my first wife, who is no longer my wife, uh, laid down the ground rules of that she needed help. I mean, because, you know, we had three kids at the beginning, but soon it came four and then it was five. And, uh, that was part of my responsibilities, were to be home and, and help with uh, bathing and homework and getting them put to bed. Uh, well, if you don't accept stress, then you don't really need to unwind. Uh, however, uh, I played basketball uh, and uh, I played in college, and uh, I've, I had continued playing up until uh, last year when I injured my knee. Uh, so now I'm 71. I, I played regularly uh, three and f two and three times a week uh, up until I was 70. So that certainly helps you to unwind. You don't think of anything at all other than what's going on on the court when you're playing. Your mind is totally clear of any problems. Well, what is stressful? What do you regard as being stressful? That's never been a problem. I don't spend what I don't have. Uh, one of the problems that occurred in the industry some years back was a lot of foreclosures. Uh, one of the reasons for a lot of foreclosures is that uh, people expanded uh, in a way that their debt service uh, created all sorts of problems for them. My expansion has been uh, done in a way that uh, for many years I didn't borrow to make it happen. I only went into projects when I had enough money saved to make it happen. Then, uh, later on, uh, each project where I ended up having debt, uh, I structured it in a way that it would pay its own debt so that I didn't need to use income from project A, which was already making a profit, to pay for Project B. Project B paid for itself. Uh, now, if I had guessed wrong at any time and the projects hadn't worked, then I might have had uh, a problem with it. But uh, I was very fortunate in that uh, uh, every one of the projects we went into for quite a few years was successful. To enjoy life, enjoy family, My favorite movie, uh, well, for many, many years, I always said it was Battle of Algiers. I saw it again recently. I don't know whether it holds up 100%. Uh, uh, you could add, uh, I mean, it's, it's say one film, I, I don't know. Uh, Jules and Jim, uh, Annie Hall, uh, 
all that jazz. Uh, I don't know. Uh, all kinds. Uh, no, I did when I was very little, but uh, like I say, I came to this country when I was three and a half years old, so my vocabulary was always limited to that of a three and a half year old. Yes, definitely was a fan. Uh, I was a fan of uh, Fellini, uh, Truffaut, uh, you know, there, there are countless number. I mean, uh, now you'd say the only director that uh, stands among those giants could be uh, Omoldovar. Uh, back uh, many years ago, you could anticipate a new film almost every year from this handful of directors, Fellini, Kurosawa, Bergman, Truffaut, etc. Uh, now, as soon as someone makes a hit film in the foreign marketplace, they get hired to make a Hollywood film. And so there are very few that have a continued progression uh, making films in their own language. It's now nice to see that uh, Verhoeven uh, after he has made, you know, I, I don't know how many films in Hollywood, some of them were fairly good, some of them were really bad, that he's back in the Netherlands making uh, uh, his new film. I've never read any. I mean, aside from college, I'm sorry, I, you know, <laughs> I did, <laughs> I did get read some books, I guess, when I was in college, but uh, that goes back uh, to the late 50s, early 60s. No. I manage in the style that suits my personality. My father's personality was very much different than mine, shouting a lot. Uh, he believed in uh, working long hours. Uh, those things didn't match into my lifestyle. Yes, he's worked with me now for, I'm not sure exactly, 15 years. I mean, before that even, he started working at the theaters when he was 15 or something like that, uh, and then he went off to college and uh, so didn't work for a number of years, and then he started his work uh, experience uh, outside of the family business for a number of years and then came into the business uh, on a full-time basis, I'm guessing 15 years ago. He basically now runs the company and I am uh, in sort of retirement. Uh, let's say that my son is so much smarter than I am uh, that it is frightening. Uh, he has a, a memory that uh, I never had. Uh, he can remember details and things right off the top of his head uh, that I had to do research on. Uh, he is more prone to stress probably than I am. Uh, but he's terrific. I don't know that there really is any. Uh, what you, what is an advantage is having analytical skills. Uh, whether you uh, have honed those skills in business classes or not doesn't matter. In college, my son was uh, a marine biologist. Uh, he went to Berkeley and graduated with honors. Uh, while he was at Berkeley, they had a repertory theater up there. Uh, since he didn't need to study very hard to get straight A's, uh, he was seeing movies almost every night. So he developed this passion for films 
he didn't have a business background, you could say, with marine biology, but he's, his mind is as sharp and as good as anybody's. So those are the skills that are more important than the actual book learning, I think, that you uh, can get out of, out of uh, school. I floundered when I first went to college because I didn't have a clue what I wanted to do. I was, became a liberal arts major and basically I hated the classes I was taking. At some point I ended up taking an aptitude test and uh, aside, the first thing was that the aptitude test showed that I was highly intelligent, which is something I had never really thought of myself. Uh, since I had never gotten particularly good grades. The other thing it told me is that I had an extremely high aptitude towards business. So all of a sudden I changed my major, became a business major, and everything made sense. So, uh, I mean, the important thing is to really find <coughs> what makes sense for you as an individual, rather than try to force yourself into, uh, you know, the square hole. Uh, find what interests you and pursue it. I have uh, five remarkable kids. Uh, in my second marriage, uh, uh, my second wife passed away. I have two children uh, that she had. They are part of my family. I am now married for a third time. She has two kids. They are part of my family. All nine kids like each other, enjoy spending time together, the f and you combine that with having had a business that is successful, I don't know, I, I have what I call a perfect life.